You remember when you were in your mama's belly? You wanted to play with an RC crawler, but you didn't quite have the reach to get to that controller outside the womb. Today, let's talk about the first time that you got into RC crawlers, or just RC in general. Yeah. <laughs> Back in my day, we had to play with our cars with an umbilical cord because wireless wasn't invented yet. <laughs> so I assume that most of the people watching this channel are into RC cars or RC crawlers specifically. And I was just kind of thinking and wondering about the first times that we got into it. I'll share my story. Y'all share your stories in the comments below. So my first foray into radio control in general was actually a little 4x4 something. I don't know what it was modeled after. Kind of like a Ford F-150 and it was from Radio Shack. It had open diffs. It worked on either four or six C batteries, which we had rechargeables for at that point in time. And the runtime was pretty terrible. You know, it was maybe 15 minutes, even though it didn't go fast. But it did have a little gear selector underneath where you could change from low speed to high speed, which was pretty cool. And at some point in time, one of those gears got broken and I essentially stole the body and never turned it into an RC car. But I was thinking about finishing that project up at some point in my life. It'd be kind of nostalgic, but it's, it's very small. Uh, so yeah, I don't know what I'd throw it on, but I'd figure something out. Maybe one of these new 18th scales. Ooh yeah, I should test that out. I think the Capra 18th scale could potentially have a similar wheelbase to it and similar track width, but I'm getting a little bit off topic here. After that particular one, and of course it broke, the next vehicle that I got was a Kyosho Raider ARR. So I went into like the buggy realm and I wasn't into racing, I just drive them around, right? And it had the three step smoke them if you got them sort of controller and I did smoke those things a whole lot. And I was very fond of the whole like forward to reverse you know, you, you go forwards, you hit reverse and then like donut and then reverse out of it. And I broke a lot of transmissions on that thing too. Uh, after that, I got a RC10. I believe it was a, it had some like a team pan on it or something like that. It was actually carbon fiber, not the graphite version, but carbon fiber. Uh, it's something that I've never actually seen again. Um, so maybe y'all know a little bit more about those, but this would have been, let's see, I was around fifth grade, so 10 years old. This was about 92. Uh, so this was the original RC10. Later on, I got the the truck conversion for that, which was really just big wheels, and it handled terribly. And then after that, I got the RC10 GT, and quickly learned that one gallon of fuel will wear out pretty much any modern glow engine. And after that, it was like, yeah, this isn't really all that fun. And crawlers weren't quite out yet. So fast forward to, let's see, Let's see, whenever the RC10 GT came out, you know, a few years after that, I, I, it's no longer working, of course. And I was in college and I was looking for just something to bide my time that wasn't more video games, right? And at the time, the T-Max was pretty fresh out, although I got the 3.3. So this wasn't the very first T-Max, but this was like the upgrade version. And I was playing with it, ended up converting it to electric because brushless was just coming out, smoked Oh, so much in electronics, unfortunately, uh, because at the time nobody knew what they were doing and Fine Design RC, who was importing Schultz motors and, uh, let's see, what speed, or was it Schultz speed controllers? No, is is uh, where is it? Where is it? I've got them around here. Hold on, hold on. All right, so if I remember correctly, it was, uh, yeah, it was a Schultz speed controller and this Linner, 5000 kV XL, which now this isn't even hardly an XL motor. Uh, so this was in my Emacs conversion. And uh, if you know anything about modern brushless systems, a 5000 kV motor, which was running on at the time nine cell nickel metal hydride, yeah, the ESC got smoked real fast, really, really fast. The motor took it just fine. You can see my terrible, weird solder job from childhood. Well, I say childhood, I was early 20s. I should have known better. But at any rate, I didn't know what I was doing. Fine design just blamed me pretty much for it. And uh, so then I had to get a whole new combo. You know, then it was running 18 cells on a half the KV sort of motor. And, you know, I learned a lot. I learned a lot that day. Um, and then after that, this dude at the hobby shop, 
Jordan is his name. He actually works for us now in customer service. He showed me this video. This video was Mud Cow. And if you're familiar with Mud Cow, then you know exactly what I'm talking about. And if you're not familiar with Mud Cow, I don't even know if an internet search is going to come up with him in the, in these days. But he had a clodbuster and he had modified it. I think he had built his own cage for it, if I remember correctly. So it definitely wasn't stock geometry. It was just the axles at that point. And he had cut and siped the tires like crazy. His, his, it looked something really similar to this actually, but with larger tires. And his videos were mostly him just kind of tooling around his yard, going up stairs and, you know, through garden beds and stuff like that. And I saw it and immediately knew like, this is it. This is the thing. Like, this looks so much fun. And about the same time, the TLT had come out. And let's see, what do they call it? The Rockbuster, TLT Rockbuster or something like that. And terrible little kit for rock crawling, but we stole the axles, same as a Clodbuster kit. And then we made the rest of our crawlers. And they, these two, between the TLT and the Clodbuster, those really got me hooked on crawling. And I, I suppose the first one was actually the Venom Mini Giant, if, uh, if I remember correctly. That had just also come out. So we could look back and see what year this was. Maybe 2004? I was still in college. I do remember that much. Um, so technically, the, the Venom Mini Giant was the first one that I got. But then immediately after that, it was, you know, Clodbuster and TLT builds. And I realized that this, this stuff wasn't for the faint-hearted. I spent about 40 hours making my first Clodbuster chassis out of just angle aluminum and plate. Cut it out with a hacksaw. I think I ended up buying a jigsaw to do the straight line cuts on the plate because I didn't have anything else at the time. I didn't have any tools other than bicycle repair tools. And yeah, I spent about 40 hours doing all of this, got it done, made my own links from all thread and arrow shafts, and then realized that the geometry on it was terrible terrible for crawling. However, at the time, there really wasn't a lot of options. And for Clodbusters, the only stuff was like racing sort of chassis and you could convert them into crawling, but they really didn't have the best geometry for it. They're meant for going fast and turning and stuff like that, not for the ability to crawl. Uh, along with the learning of chassis, chassis geometry being extremely difficult, I also learned that crawling with something like a stock motor, like a 21 turn 540, Terrible, terrible, terrible idea. They would smoke, they'd smoke ESCs, and that's when I really started getting into the motors. For the Venom Mini Giant, I'd rewound the stock one from whatever 21 or 27 turn stock it was to a 55 turn motor. And so I just guessed, you know, maybe 55 turn is gonna be good for a Clodbuster. I threw in what was available at the time, which was the Entity Lathe motors. And lo and behold, things didn't overheat. We also didn't have problems, which I know now to be brush saturation. And so it would keep the same torque throughout the entire battery life, which at the time was six cell nickel metal hydride. Sometimes we bump up to nine cell, but for something like the Clodbuster, you just throw a pack into the middle and the more weight you had in the middle, the worse it would crawl. So we'd kind of keep it lightweight. This was before lithium polymer was really on the market. So I learned something at least about motors back then. And I didn't really know what it was, but that slower motors seem to perform better in crawlers, especially when you're gearing limited. These days I know, well, if I had just doubled the gear down on the Clodbuster, then I could have still crawled with those stock motors, but the Clodbuster is very limited on gear down. Uh, you'd have to use like smaller tires, get the whole pinion kit and go from the stock, whatever 13 it was down to a nine or eight or whatever. It's been so long, I don't quite remember, but that's what got me hooked. I'd go out and I'd crawl on Rip Rap. We'd go out to Cape and Park and we'd just crawl, 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 have fun. And the ones kind of funny, the sections that were so much trouble back then, even with something as big as a Clodbuster, much larger than this, these days, the modern tires, they just walk right up. And as long as your center of gravity is low enough and on most of the rigs that I have, it is, uh, except for, where is it? Where'd it go? Oh, it's down here. Except for the ultra scale rigs, which are, you know, the super top heavy and we've got leaf sprung suspension and everything. Except for that sort of rig, everything can just walk all of those old spots that we had so much trouble in. So we've really come a long ways, especially with ready to run rigs. They're, they're just quite amazing. Even the tire compounds, you know, these are, these were state of the art about 10 years ago. And now the tire compounds that are coming on ready to run rigs are just as good, if not better in a lot of cases. So. Yeah, that, that's my story and I'm sticking to it.
From there, it turned into quite the addiction. I started home hobbies in 2005 so that I could fund that addiction because I had a regular day job and you know paying all the bills and doing everything and buying toys at the end of the day. I just couldn't afford it all. So I figured, you know, we'll, we'll start the night business and any profits that I get from the business, I'll just buy my toys with it. It'll work out perfectly. And uh, things got out of hand kind of quickly in, in that regard. So. I was able to fund my toy addiction and now we have just a few of them back here. I've got twice as many still at the hobby house I need to be brought over and I'm still crawling. It is still that addiction that uh, it really wiped away all my other RC wants. I, every now and then I'll get out the quadcopters, the little bitty guys, but my airplanes I really haven't touched for decades now. I used to love airplanes, so that, that was in that whole period which I just glossed over at the beginning. I really got into airplanes, extremely fun. I should probably pull them out again here sometime. That'd be a good idea. But still keeping up with the crawling, I love it. I love new rigs that come out. I still like building. It's such a varied aspect of the hobby that there's really, you, you can keep yourself busy with either the scale aspect or actually going trail riding or building things up or doll housing them out, you know, making your own interiors from stuff or there's just so many parts of it. Let me know what parts you like the best about it. And maybe it's not even crawling, but if it is crawling, is it the scale aspect or the trailing aspect or, you know, actually going out with your buddies or do you like to wrench by yourself in the basement? You know, they're, they're all perfectly fun ways to enjoy this hobby. So let me know in the comments. I would like to hear about how you started into RC and maybe RC crawlers in particular. And otherwise, if you got any questions, leave them down below. And I do appreciate you tuning in. Have a great day.